Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning and welcome to worship on this morning, the second Sunday in the season of Easter. Um, a reminder that it is a season of Easter, not just one Sunday. A couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, St. Luke will be uh, in charge of delivering Meals on Wheels for the month of May, so let us know if you uh, feel called to do such an act of service as that. Also, if you are willing to volunteer to usher or read, uh, let us know on that as well. If you, uh, the new newsletter is out for today, for this month. And uh, if you'll notice, there are a couple of open spots we need to fill for ushering for this month. So please let us know if you are able and willing to share your gifts in that way. Are there any other announcements, corrections, additions? If not, as you're comfortable, I invite you to rise for our, our confession and forgiveness as we begin our service. In remembrance of our new life in Christ through the waters of baptism, we begin at the baptismal font in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our opening hymn. attending glory round his wounded brow 
Christ is risen, alleluia, risen our victorious head. Sing his praises, alleluia, Christ is risen from the dead. Christ is risen in all the sorrow that last evening round him lay. Now has found a glorious morrow in the rising of the day. He the grave its first fruits giving, springing up from holy ground. Christ was dead, but now is living. He was lost, but he is found. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Risen our victorious head. Sing his praises. Alleluia. Christ is risen from the dead. Christ is risen. Henceforth never death or hell shall us enthrall. We are Christ in him forever. We have triumphed over all, all the doubting and dejection of our trembling hearts have ceased. Hail the day of resurrection, let us rise and keep the feast. Christ is risen, alleluia. Christ is risen from the dead. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is a feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, 
join together in the prayer of the day. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The first reading comes from Acts chapter 4, verses 32 through 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were one of heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions. But everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There is not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Our psalm for the second Sunday of Easter is Psalm 133. We will read it responsibly. How good and how pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head, flowing down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, flowing down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon flowing down upon the hills of Zion, for there the Lord has commanded the blessing of life forevermore. Here ends the psalm. The second reading comes from the first John chapter one, verse one through chapter two, verse two. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at in touch with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testified to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Please rise for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel on the second Sunday of Easter is according to John, the 20th chapter. 
Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our crucified, risen, and ascended Lord Jesus Christ. Fear can be paralyzing. Um, If you've heard of the author, the classic author H.G. Wells, he lived through the, uh, the bombings of London during World War II. And one evening, it is written down that a fellow writer of his named Elizabeth Bowen found him outside shaking with fear. And he said, it's not the bombs. It's the dark. I've always been afraid of the darkness all of my life. Fear can be overwhelming. When we think about fear, we often think of fight or flight. Either fight the cause of that fear or run away from it. But if we are feeling overwhelmed and fear encroaches on us, it may stop us right in our tracks. It's where the common phrase paralyzed with fear actually comes from. And the disciples in our gospel this morning, are they're no different than that. Jesus' death on the cross is very fresh at this point in our gospel. And not only that, these 11 followers of Jesus are paralyzed with fear. They don't know what's going to happen to them next. If it is their leader that got taken down, who would logically be the next ones to go? They think that they're going to be the ones put on the cross next. Who's next in line for going against the belief system of the Jews and the Roman Empire? Who's going to get killed like their beloved Jesus? Absolutely paralyzing questions to be thinking about. It's no wonder that they're scared. These disciples feel like the whole world is out to get them. But for any fear, reassurance can be a wondrous antidote. It serves as a way for humans to confront the unknown in a way that moves them from paralysis to action. The presence of Jesus among the disciples provides the reassurance they need. In the middle of their fear, Jesus speaks of peace. Peace be with you is how he addresses his followers upon his appearance. 
Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Reassurance also comes through Jesus revealing himself. Jesus shows his disciples his wounded hands inside. It is a very personal and vulnerable act and experience for Jesus and all who are gathered in that room. Through this, Jesus' disciples are empowered to continue to work on, uh, on Jesus' ministry through receiving the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If, the, if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. With Jesus revealing himself to the disciples, these disciples are no longer afraid of what is to come in their lives and ministries, and that's a good thing, because all but one of them get martyred for their Christian faith, specifically. But not every disciple was present that first time Jesus revealed himself. Thomas, noted as the twin throughout scripture, throughout scripture, he was not present with the rest of the disciples to whom Jesus revealed. So when the rest of the disciples tell Thomas of what happened, he's still in fear and extremely skeptical. And who can blame him? One of the ways we tend to show fear is through skepticism. And Thomas is a clear example of this. Thomas says to his fellow disciples, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. That's a pretty extreme request. About a week later, the disciples were again together in a room with the door shut. Um, it says door shut. Generally, when scripture says that, it means they were locked slash barricaded in there. And this time, Thomas was present with them. And out of nowhere, Jesus appears to the disciples once again and says, peace be with you. An act of telling them not to be alarmed, even though he just appeared to them literally out of nowhere. Jesus says to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas responds, my Lord and my God. That right there is a confession by Thomas. It says a lot. He is admitting how wrong he was to doubt what was going on. He was so scared that he needed that hard evidence. But now he, he doesn't. But Jesus doesn't stop there with them. Jesus says, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. And then our gospel gives us a huge cliffhanger. It says that Jesus performed many signs for the disciples that are not written, but the ones that were written are there so that we can come to believe in the risen Christ. That's genius writing right there. Think about what just happened with Doubting Thomas and now they're forcing us to do it. <clears throat> Our own gospel reading today is inviting us to step out in faith and believe in what is written in these scriptures. Even though in the year of our Lord, 2024, we have not witnessed those exact signs of Jesus. Jesus does not just appear on the regular. Our gospel is calling you 
to step out in faith and believe that Jesus died on the cross in a horrible crucifixion and rose again on the third day for you. For the forgiveness of all of your sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And not just that, because of what Jesus did, grace, love, and eternal life are promised through the risen Christ. That is where our faith and belief stems from, from the promises of Jesus Christ for you. What happens to you when you experience fear? Do you fight it? Do you run away from it? Do you freeze? Do you call your spouse from the next room to get rid of that spider in the corner? Don't ask me about personal experience with that one. Or are you like Thomas and refuse to believe it until you see it? Now, that's not to rag on Thomas here. He was only being human and asking questions. What we must ask on this day is whether or not our fear gets in the way of our faith. And it's not talking about applying the tagline faith over fear to everything. Because there are things in the world that it is perfectly reasonable to have the wits scared out of you for. But I'm more so talking about the things in life that give us fear of the unknown or fear of the what if. Fear of the things we can't see and are only told about. Fear of the things we don't have control over. Because even in those spaces of fear, those liminal spaces, the risen Christ with holes in his hands and his side shows up for each and every one of us. That is the Easter promise, my friends. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs> Creator of 
shall not fail. As you are comfortable, I invite you to rise as we confess our Christian faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your church cries out, O God, and you listen. As you drew near to the disciples, draw near to us this day. Breathe on us, Holy Spirit that our faith is renewed and we witness to your love. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your creation cries out, O God, and you listen. Nurture trees, crops, wildflowers, and all growing things. Guide farmers, gardeners, arborists, and others who tend to the soil and nurture plants into life. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your world cries out, O God, and you listen. Guide police, firefighters, paramedics, and other first responders to work for the well-being of communities and the dignity of every person, that no one may need to live in fear. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your children cry out, O God, and you listen. Hear your people who cry out in suffering or pain or illness. We especially pray this day for Annette, Tim, Chris, Michael, Gerald, Arliss, Lorraine, Marla, Joel, Ruth, and all those whom we pray both silently and aloud. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your congregations cry out, O God, and you listen. Renew pastors, deacons, musicians, and other staff, administrators, and volunteers who facilitated Holy Week and Easter worship. Open our hearts to discern where God calls each and every one of us to serve. God of grace, hear our prayer. Accept our gratitude, O God, for the lives of those who now rest in you. Grant us your peace amid our fears. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love. Through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Let us share the peace with one another. Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us, give thanks, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of your Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. 
Merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. And when he gave thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Gather into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let us remember that this is not my table. This is not your table. This is not St. Luke's table. But this is Christ's table. And all who believe that Jesus Christ, his body and blood, is truly present through the bread and wine for the forgiveness of sins are welcome to share in this meal. All is now ready. You may be seated. And now may the body and blood of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. And receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our closing hymn. Alleluia, Jesus is risen, trumpets resounding in glorious light, splendor the Lamb, heaven forever. Oh, what a miracle God has inside. Jesus is risen and we shall arise. Give God the glory. Hallelujah. Walking
serve the Lord. And remember that God loves you and so do I.